Want to impress your guests? Host a Loco for Local party and take advantage of all that your farmer's market has to offer. Using local seasonal produce that's bursting with flavor, we've got your party made easy. Cucumber gimlets are refreshing and simply scream summer. We'll whip up some Greek salsa, crunchy radish bruschetta, and delicious crab and cucumber pastries with mustard sauce. Your guests will be able to taste the local flavor in every bite. Making the most of flowers in season, we'll show you how to dress up your table using casual and affordable flowers from area farms as well as your own backyard. Farmers, Farmer's Almanac Blackjack and a crazy soundtrack are sure to have everyone at your party going local for local. So we are going to do a Loco for Local cocktail. I am very excited for this. I, I have been making my own moonshine this week. <laughs> she actually has <laughs> right here in our little mason jars. <laughs> so we are going to do a cucumber gimlet, which uses some of the most fresh ingredients that we got at our local farmer's market, both the Dedham Farmer's Market and my friends at Langwater Farm in Easton on Route 138 have helped us with some of the most freshly picked vegetables you've ever seen. They taste and smell fabulous. Absolutely. Okay, so what do you want me to start with? Okay, so what we did was before we began, because you have to do some steps in advance, Alexander went ahead and infused both gin and vodka, depending on how you like your gimlet. Absolutely. It's very easy. All you have to do is peel seed and chop about a half a cucumber for each mason jar fill it with either gin or vodka let it sit in your refrigerator for three days to two weeks done and the beautiful thing about this is your drink is going to start out cold anyway exactly. which is fabulous okay so then we took four fresh cucumbers we peeled de-seeded and chopped them then we put them into the blender and pureed them yes and it's very important to when you're putting it through the sieve to really kind of smush it down because the cucumber water will all come out of it exactly and so we let that chill as well so again we're going to be starting with some nice cold ingredients you're not going to feel like you're bogged down with ice then what we're going to do is we're going to take the jigger and we're going to put four tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice, which was also fresh from our local farms, and six sprigs of mint, which is also fresh from my friends at Langwater Farm. Um, I actually plant this around my porch because it, it wards off mosquitoes. Well, and it also takes over your yard, so be very careful. It plant it in a place where it can move around. Exactly. Just say that. It smells fabulous. So just toss it in. We're going to do that, yep. And then we're going to do three tablespoons of sugar. Um, and this is not a full tablespoon, so we'll probably do a little yeah, more I'll go a little that. heavy on it, okay. And we're going to go ahead and muddle that. Yeah, just do that. How about that? Okay. Well, you know how I'm... How I do enjoy a good muddle. Ah, uh, we all do. We're muddling through life. Exactly. Um, now the gimlet is something that I sort of equate with the 30s, but we've come up with a fancy and festive glass here that we're going to use. Um, so what we're going to do is we've muddled that. We're going to pour it into a um, pitcher with the cucumber juice. And just leave the, uh, leave the um, leaves in there because yep. it will taste fabulous. Okay, we're just going to pour this right in. Mm -hmm. Now, because we've decided to do both gin and vodka, we're going to put a half a shot in each glass and then stir. But if you want to do it in the pitcher, you can use one and a quarter cups of either, depending on which you prefer. All right, All right so that's beautiful. Now, our little shot glass here. Okay, so I'm going to make the, I'll make, well, Meeks are gin drinkers. We are. Gin Gibbs, not so much. I drink the vodka too, but gin is is home. Now you do not <laughs> gin is home. You do not 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 want to put the cucumbers in Stop. with what you're making because um, well they're pickled. You can eat them if you like, but oh wow you're gonna get a good buzz off of that. One gin. Okay, we got two gins here. Two ginny gin. All right. All right. And remember which is which, so we don't uh, mess and them up. And so we'll do three gins and then one vodka. Okay. Uh, here we are. And now we have done a gin drink before with cucumbers. People think it sounds weird, but it's actually delicious. Oh, strangely enough, strange bedfellows. 
um, which you might find if you drink too much gin. So, um, <laughs> you, you think you're going to find a strange bedfellow you if you know. drink too much gin? Yeah. Be careful. Oh. Alrighty, so that's what we've got. We're going to go ahead and pour that in and then we're going to slice up some lemons for a garnish and a sprig of mint. Okay, here, you want to take over pouring okay, duties? Do that. Okay. And all of this cucumber is just freshly washed. Do not peel it, leave the skin on, it'll be fabulous. Okay, here, if you want to throw those in. And then I believe we must really be inviting our fellow party Absolutely. girls in. All right, ladies. There Who's we are. ready? Hey. You don't have to tell us twice. Oh, so oh, look at oh, you. Well. I'm just tossing them Sorry. right in. So okay, yeah, Jen's your, your vodka's on the there end. There you All are, right. my friend. Jen around Jen. a little. Okay. Cheers. cheers. And cheers. All right, I'm very excited for this. Oh, mm. summer, right? Yeah. You taste the mint and the cucumber? It does. Wow. Oh, I can't even taste the alcohol. You can't. No. <laughs> That's dangerous. Uh, and, and, and trust me, we know our alcohol. And That's again, <laughs> remember, make your own moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 Okay, so here we are, appetizers. Yummy. So easy at this time of year because there is literally a bounty at every fruit market, uh, farmer's market out there. I mean, that it's ridiculous. Summer. It is. Okay. You can walk those aisles yeah. for days and yeah. find new things and new excuses and new recipes to put them into. And it's yummy and pretty and I, just, I love summer. It's pretty, I exactly. Love it really, it's like flowers. It is. So what we've decided to do here is a Greek salsa. It's a takeoff of an ordinary salsa using Greek ingredients. Couldn't be easier. This is, like many of our recipes, one of those things where feel free to throw whatever you want in there as well. This is just a starting point. So super easy. What we decided to do is to start off with some cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, whichever one you can find local. Um, you can use the tomatoes that grow in your garden. Who cares? Whatever kind of tomato you can find. Exactly. It's good, fresh tomato that tastes like a real tomato. Tastes like a real Real tomato. Oh, we've waited a long time <laughs> for this tomato. We've waited a long time for you. Yes, we have. Anyways, so we're going to start off with chopped up tomatoes. Chop them kind of nice and fine. And then we've got all of our ingredients here. We did a small red onion. Okay. In that goes. We did two small English uh, cucumbers chopped up. We de-seeded them and chopped them up nicely. Can you start chopping this one? I ready? would. I would love that. Sorry to interrupt. What Jen has over there is probably the best part of summer too is all the fresh herbs. Came she, from my backyard. It came, this one, came, this is fresh parsley that came from Jen's backyard. She's chopping that up as well. We're also doing one clove of garlic, just minced. No big deal. This is where we get to the Greek part. Now we're also going to do one avocado, which are just fantastic this time of year. Oh, and cheap. Hello. Oh. Finally. And a bunch of olives. This is for my sister Alex. Big shout out for you with my olive sister. Sorry. Olives, feta, avocado. Literally, Please. I could eat that at every meal. I was just going to I believe I might, actually. before we turned the camera on, Jen <laughs> told me that she could eat her body weight in feta, which is our last ingredient. <laughs> I really A did. little bit of feta in there or a lot. Go for it. Depending Don't on be shy. depending on who you are. We're cheese like lovers. If you're we us. establish the cheese lovers. Yeah. Exactly. And then we get Jen's gonna throw her parsley in there. Okay, now we're almost done. This is kind of pathetic. <laughs> it's been so hard. A couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar, just for a little bit of bite. Mm -hmm. And a couple tablespoons of olive oil. You can also do some salt and pepper if you'd like, although I feel like the feta has a little bit of the salt and pepper in there, so we don't really need too much. Jen, if you want to stir that nicely. The other thing we'd like to serve this with, and we did this on a previous Gala Girls, I believe, pita chips, staple in Greek cuisine, or American Greek cuisine at least. Um, so pita chips, basically just slice them into little triangles like this, drizzle olive oil and some more of those fresh herbs if you'd like in them. Smells so good. And throw them in the oven at 350 or so for about 10 minutes till they get crisped up and crunchy. Maybe flip them over once or twice. Oh, might get a little oregano. Oregano Very on top great. of that as well. And you just serve them. And the best part of this dish is something that Jen mentioned earlier. It's so pretty. It's so <laughs> and pretty. Look at this. You gotta I love mean, every color of the rainbow. It's true. You gotta love when there's a little uh, style to your substance. Should and uh, please, yep, throw some in there. Want me to hold this for you? Or yeah. You got it. And. I have to tell you, this stuff, it tastes better the longer it sits. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make this be before you start your party, 
and leave it in the fridge just to sit for a couple of hours so those flavors kind of meld, it's great. One last thing is if you don't feel like doing the olive and vinegar, um, olive oil and vinegar root, feel free to throw on your favorite Italian dressing or some sort of like balsamic. Uh, Paul Newman is my particular favorite. Mm, nice. um, but really, it's just, it's, it's the loveliest, easiest dish out there and tastes delicious and you won't feel bad eating it because it's really not that bad for you. Can I taste it? Feel free. <laughs> Oh, she goes for the big bowl. I'd go for the big God bowl. God bless. Come this on. is why we're friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so for our second appetizer tonight, which is also super easy, we're doing crab and cucumber in phyllo cups with a mustard sauce. Yum. Delish. So you've seen these before on our show before. You can buy them in the freezer section. They're your little phyllo cups already done for you. It takes half the work out of the way. Ah, oh, phyllo is delicious. And what you do is you take the cups out and you put them in the oven at 350 for about five minutes or so so they get crisped up because we're going to fill them with something and this is a cold appetizer. Excellent. Okay. So we're starting out with eight ounces of crab meat, which um, as we said last time, crab meat has come a long way, people. Crab meat now is really good and you can find it in your supermarket um, in the fish section and it's a lot cheaper and a lot better than it used to be. So we got some white crab meat, about eight ounces. What's that white stuff you're using? I know. It's so funny. Is this Hellman's? Sorry. No, yes, it's Hellman's. Oh, How really? did you know? It's Hel oh. Hellman's full fat mayonnaise. And as you know, I bring my own mayonnaise. My sister Alex said to me as I was driving over, I have mayonnaise. And I said, no, I don't trust you anymore. Last time I came, there was hardly any. She goes, you'll never trust me again, will you? And I said, no, I will not. She was chosen to bring the condiments on vacation. She told us she didn't bring mayonnaise because she thought of it as an ingredient, not, not a, a condiment. condiment. Blasphemy. <laughs> Are you listening, people at Hellman's? Blasphemy. I choose to ignore her as a sister from now on. Yeah. All right, moving on. We also have a small red onion. Throw that in there for me. Voila. About a quarter of a cup of fresh chives oh, from Jen so Gibbs's good. garden as well. And a couple teaspoons of lime juice. Very nice. Jocelyn, if you want to mix that all up for me. Love to. Now this over here. Okay, now I'm going to talk about this while you mix. Mm -hmm. We did two other things. What we did is we um, de-seeded and peeled a uh, another lovely cucumber and chopped it up into fine little pieces like this. And we added a little bit of dill, also from Jen's garden, and a tiny bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. So we let it sit for about 20 minutes or so out here. So it's nice and marinated and the flavors have all come together. And then in this bowl, we did two, two tablespoons of Dijon, two tablespoons of sour cream, and mm. one tablespoon of cream just to thin it a little bit. This is your mustard sauce. Mm -hmm. So Jocelyn, why don't you start, we're gonna start by spooning in the crab part into each of the phyllo cups. So dainty. Very dainty, exactly. And then when Jocelyn has finished putting that, then I do a tiny bit of cucumber on top of each. And by the way, the presentation is so pretty. It really is, it's pretty, it smells delicious, it looks oh, fantastic. And it's a great way to marshal your summer resources. Once again, marshal. <laughs> wow. Whatever. Um, so we're also used to buying sort of gluey, glutinous produce during the winter. But when you can get it in the summer and it's local and you know it was picked yesterday, uh, the taste is so different. Yes. I don't eat tomatoes in the winter, but you know. These are delicious. And the other thing too is that the cucumbers provide that nice little snap that you need with the crab. Last but not least, the last part of this is the mustard sauce. So when you're finished filling all of these cups, you're just going to drizzle a little bit of the mustard sauce basically over your whole platter like this. Just a little tang that goes on each of them like so. Yum. And then they're ready to serve. And it's a wonderful cold appetizer that you can serve on a hot summer evening. And you can do this a little bit in advance too. You can. Enjoy. Nice. And now for our final appetizer, we are going to do a crispy radish bruschetta. Yum. Yummy. Courtesy of our local food blogger, celebrity food, food blogger uh, slash chef, Amy McCoy, and her book is Poor Girl Gourmet. And she does a great blog, as you said. She does. So definitely check Get it out. Gotta look her up. But this is great. This is fabulous. I love, I love all the ingredients. We got every single thing from our farmer's market. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with, um, actually, I'm going to start with the roasted garlic, because that's what you kind of need to do first. Um, you chop off the top of the whole thing of the garlic, put it on two pieces of foil, a little olive oil, mm -hmm. wrap it up, stick it in the oven, 425, 450 for about half right. an hour mm -hmm. and so then now we're going to go back to our, our um, baguette is what I chose that's what they had at the farmers market right, you right. know any kind of crispy bread 
and you're going to toast that to the desired crisp crispness and then slap. I think we, yeah, we did like, like crispy. We did like six minutes of yeah, 350 easy. it wasn't that easy. long at all. And then slather a little butter on it and then set it to the side for a second. Then you're going to, you've already cleaned your radishes. And this, I love, you're going to use the whole thing. I've never done that before. I always feel so bad <laughs> wasting the, the top part. But you're going to use the leafy green, which is obviously the green part at the top. Right. And you're going to wilt that. So in a pan, you're going to get a couple of tablespoons of butter, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Get that heated up. Put your six cloves of garlic chopped up coarsely and get that nice and, and warm and then put your well washed be well very washed diligent right, about yeah. that. You don't want crispy, like grainy. Well washed. That'd be nasty. That'd be nasty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Washed <laughs> radish greens, chopped, and then put those in there and wilt them. It takes like two or three minutes yeah. tops. It's quick. It's tops. And then your And then your, all those radishes <laughs> turn into this tiny little bit of thing. But you don't need a lot for the no, flavor. It's no got way. the garlic, the olive oil, the butter, and yep. you're, you don't need a whole lot. So you're going to put a little bit of that on the toasted pieces of bread. So if right. you want to do, start. What am I doing that? First? You're, you're just putting the the, um, the wilted greens okay. on there first, just a little bit. It doesn't need to go crazy, just right. enough for some good flavor. I'm very excited. Yeah. I've never I'm, had um, wilted radish greens. I, I haven't either, and it smells fantastic. And again, I always feel bad. I mean, I compost the stuff I don't use, but I still would rather use it. I mean, you actually make a whole meal out of the whole bunch of radishes. Oh, and I forgot, it's about 12 radishes. Yeah. So um, look at you, Jen, living off the land, I am. man. Oh, these mm, look so good. They do. And they're gorgeous. Really you know pretty. Lots I mean? of color. You've got the red, the green. It looks yummy. And this is really all it is. That's it. Can I taste? Yes, please do. Okay, this is going to be super crunchy, so I'm going to get away from okay. the mic. Mm. Oh, this is so good. You can actually taste the fresh the radish. The garlic and the radish. <laughs> I love it. So there, I mean, seriously, that could not have been any easier. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you, Amy there McCoy. You go. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so now we are ready to set the party atmosphere for our Loco for Local party. This is the nice. best part. Oh, it sure fun. is. And what we're going to be doing tonight for a floral arrangement, which I think is very important for this kind of a party, because all of our flowers are grown locally. You actually were able to get some flowers in Brockton? Uh, no, they're from Easton. Oh. They're from Langwater Farm. They are community supported agriculture and you can buy a share where they'll deliver you flowers once a week from May to September. I'm so I'm signing up for that next year. year. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is what's called an apun and this is a little nod to my mother darling mm. because she loves a good apun. What you do is you take two footed cake stands, one smaller than the other, and you literally just go like this done. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to decorate it with some of the local fruits. We have got the most gorgeous um, peaches, peaches oh, some nectarines. Here, you want to start arranging them? Yeah. Literally just putting them around. These are called methley plums. They are the fruit equivalent of an heirloom tomato and they're very, very yeah. delicate. Yep, so they don't you won't travel. Find them in a grocery store. No, because they don't travel well. So you really will not find them in a grocery store whatsoever. Apricots? Apricot, uh, apricot, I don't know what they're called. Potato, potato. I say apricot, but you know what? Maybe down in Texas they do things a little apricot. differently. I don't know. You I'm might. Confusing yeah. confusing myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to arrange those all around because I think that fruit actually makes for a beautiful arrangement. You can put some on the top as well. Um, and then here is where we're going to put our flowers. Now what I did was clip some hydrangeas from my yard. You can't get more local or cheap than that now, yeah. can you? Um, and Jocelyn, if you want to help me cut some low. I also clipped these from my yard. I thought it was weed, but Alexander told me it's not, <laughs> so that's a good thing. No, it's called stock and it's lovely. Okay. And so what we're going to do, Jocelyn, you're going to work on another arrangement over there. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is literally just, here, let me borrow these for a sec, literally, ah, um, flower, down. flower down. Once you get them all in together, yeah. they're going to they're gonna kind of stand up straight. So this is going to serve as your stock, as we always, uh, I'm sorry, like your oasis, oasis, as we always do. And then you're just going to take a lot of these beautiful little wildflowers that Jocelyn was able to pick up, and you just kind of keep plunking them in. So much beautiful color. I mean, if it's, isn't it? It's, it says summer. And oh, I have to throw in there. <clears throat> segue. Speaking of color, if you notice, we're not all in black tonight. For we're pretty not. much the first time. And there's a reason. Would you like to explain? I certainly would. Our friends at Old Navy have decided to become our brand new sponsor. I love Old Navy. And so not only are we going to be wearing all of the Old Navy um, 
uh, clothing in all of our episodes, but we're also going to be doing a bunch of giveaways. Um, so go on our Facebook page. What we're going to do is we're going to ask you a question. I think this month it's going to be what's your favorite thing to buy at a farmer's market. All you have to do is go on there, comment, and you, my friends, could win gift cards to Old Navy. How great is that? And, and it doesn't matter where you are in the country, you can use them anywhere. So that's Absolutely. what's you know fantastic. No doubt. So Jen, I'm going to slide this all thing right, right on over to you as I move along. All right. If that's okay. Um, now what we're going to move on to is is our soundtrack. Um, what I always love is our soundtrack and this one, Loco for Local. What we've decided to do is kick up the Loco part of it and we've done all songs with the word crazy in it because we're a little crazy. Um, so we've got obviously Living La Vida Loca, Crazy by Patsy Cline, uh, Still Crazy After All These Years, uh, Crazy by Norris Barkley. All of it will be available to download on our page. We want to give a shout out to another one of our fabulous sponsors, Textile Designs, for doing the best invitations ever. Seriously, those are adorable. This one says, the farmer has to be an optimist or he wouldn't still be a farmer. That's a Will Rogers quote. Yeah. You can go on, available on our website, www.greaterbostongallagirls.com. Easy. Done. And now, I think it's time for the game. <laughs> Your personal favorite. My yes. personal favorite. Now this one is a blast. I'm not going to lie to you. It was definitely a little weird trying to come up with, but it's called Farmer's Almanac Blackjack. Say that five times. Yeah, no kidding. Especially after a couple of these cucumber <laughs> gimlets. Yeah, no kidding. Um, what you're going to use for your poker chips are blueberries. So you're going to deal each player 10 blueberries. Okay. And now you're all Can playing. I raise you a strawberry? <laughs> you, no, you can't. Strawberries, not cool. Sorry. Not cool. Yes, Those are fruit. Vegas rules. Oh, These oh, are farmer's market okay. rules. So what I'm going to do, everyone is playing against the dealer. I'm going to ask you a question. For example, according to an old proverb, fish bite more before a storm. Why is this? Either A, lower barometric pressure, B, an increase in humidity levels, or C, convection under the water creating a disturbance to the fish. A. C. Okay, so you would all bet me a blueberry. Okay, okay. Whoever is right. Get small. Yep. Well, yep, you're playing against the dealer. The answer is A, lower barometric yes. pressure. So everybody, you can go on our site, download this game. It's a ton of fun. It's really easy. And your prize can either be the aforementioned Farmer's Almanac. I took this one up from the library. Hard to find in August. There's a new one. There's a new one coming out in August, so check your bookstores. Also, you can give out our friend Amy McCoy's book, Poor Girl Gourmet. Um, we are also going to be raffling off um, on our Facebook page an autographed copy of this, so stay tuned. And obviously, also, an Old Navy gift card is not a bad thing. <laughs> Back me up. Hmm. Absolutely. So with that, I think we're really ready to like, you know, rock on farmers and let's all get our cocktails. Come on in, Jennifer. Um, ah, I have I was gonna say, where is mine? I couldn't see it. So everybody remember to visit your local farmers market. Some of the best produce around comes from right in your backyard. Mm -hmm. Let's say backyard and literally. Backyard. Backyard. Literally, literally, that's literally right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So with that, we say any excuse, excuse for, for a party. party. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.